Throughout this course, we only ever used one method of designing for an FPGA or CPLD. We used VHDL. But every time we went to add that VHDL file to our project, I'm sure you noticed a whole host of other options for design files. In fact, there are many different ways of designing for a CPLD or FPGA, from drawing a basic schematic block diagram to using a state machine centric design. And then there are the more classical text based coding languages like Verilog HDL and VHDL. In this lesson, we will take a look at how to create the same design, but in three different ways. In the first method, we will use the schematic and block diagram builder to draw up the design. In the second method, we will use the Verilog HDL language, which while it is similar to VHDL, you will see that it's less complicated and more to the point. And in the third method, we will use the familiar VHDL language that we've been using throughout this course. The design we will make using these three different methods will be a basic 4-bit counter, similar to the one we built in Lesson 6. For the first project, we'll use the schematic method. So use the new project wizard to build the project. I'll save the project on the desktop in the FPGA slash Lesson 10 slash Lesson 10A folder, and the project will be named Lesson 10A. Select the EPM 3032 ATC 44-10 CPLD device for the project, then finish off the project creation. Now add a blank block diagram schematic design file to the project. To add components, we use the symbol tool. Inside of the symbol tool, there's a wide variety of different parts that you can drop onto the schematic and use, from logic gates to 74 series ICs. The first thing we'll want to add to the schematic are GND ground and VCC power connections. After that, we need our 4-bit counter IC, the 74193. And now we'll add input and output pins. To use that, we use the pin tool. So first we'll add two input pins these will be the clock and reset pins for our project. So we rename them and then use the orthogonal node tool to connect them to the 74193. We'll never be using the other input pins, so we'll connect the load pin to power and ABCD inputs to ground. Afterwards, we'll use the pin tool again to add four output pins. Then each pin is renamed from LED0 to LED3. And then we again use the orthogonal node tool to connect each output to the QA to QD outputs on the 74193. Now save the file as lesson 10a.bdf and compile the project. After the compile finishes, go up to the pin planner and then reassign pin locations with clock at pin 37, LEDs from 19 to 22, and the reset pin at pin 44. Do a recompile and then we're done we have a basic 4-bit counter ready for our CPLD. Now we'll do the exact same thing, but using Verilog HDL. I'll save the project on the desktop in the FPGA Lesson 10, Lesson 10B folder, and the project will also be named Lesson 10B. Then choose the EPM 3032 ATC 44-10 CPLD device and complete the project creation process. This time, we'll add a new Verilog HDL file to the project. In Verilog, the first thing you define is your top-level module's signals. Then you go through and define which ones are inputs and which ones are outputs, along with how many bits wide they are. We'll also be using a register to hold the counter's current value. Next, we will make a process that should always run whenever there is a positive edge transition on the clock or reset input signals. Then we begin our process by first checking if reset has been triggered. If it has, then the reset count value should return to zero. Otherwise, increment the count value. Lastly, we assign the count value to the LED output. And now save the project as lesson10b.v and start the compile process. After it succeeds, Use the pin planner to assign the same pin locations as our previous project, then go ahead and recompile the project. And then we're done. We have another basic 4-bit counter ready for our CPLD. In our third and final iteration, 
We'll use VHDL to build the same 4-bit counter. We start again by using the new project wizard. I'll save the project on the desktop in the FPGA Lesson 10, Lesson 10C folder and name the project Lesson 10C. We'll be using the EPM 3032 ATC44-10 CPLD device, so select it and finish the project creation. This time, we're making the counter in VHDL, so add a new VHDL file to the project. First, we'll be using the IEEE libraries, so declare that, and then specifically, we need to use the standard logic 1164 and unsigned logic libraries. Next, we define the port entity Lesson 10C. It has two inputs, reset and clock, and four LED outputs in a standard logic vector. We'll name the architecture RTL and it will have one 4-bit signal called count. Then we begin the architecture. We will make a process called upcounter with a clock and reset in its sensitivity list. Inside the process, if reset is ever one, the count value should be zero. Otherwise, if clock is a rising edge, then increment the count value by one. Then end the process and assign the count value to the LED output. Now end the architecture and go ahead and save the file as lesson 10c.vhd and compile the project. After the compile, pull up the pin planner and set all the proper pin locations, then recompile the project. And now we have a third 4-bit timer project done. So let's go over and build up the hardware schematic that goes with these three CPLD projects. First, we have the familiar power regulator circuit that takes a 9 volt input from a battery and downregulates to 3.3 volts. Then we have the CPLD connections, power connections up top, ground connections at the bottom, a reset pull down resistor at pin 44, and four LEDs with resistors from pin 19 to pin 22. Finally, we have the clock generation circuit which uses an ICM7555 timer to output a clean clock from pin 3. The clock frequency from this setup will output at about 10 Hz. And that's the complete hardware schematic. Here's a layout of all the parts we'll be using in this experiment. The larger parts are a jumper wire kit, components kit, and a breadboard. The smaller parts from the components kit are a CPLD breakout board, ICM7555 timer module, LM317 voltage regulator, three 10 microfarad capacitors, five 470 ohm resistors, one 390 ohm resistor, one 240 ohm resistor, three 10 kilo ohm resistors, five red LEDs, and a 9 volt battery connector. Now we'll build up the circuit part by part in a slow time lapse so that you can build the circuit with us. First we'll build the power regulator on the right side of the breadboard, the CPLD connections will be on the left side of the breadboard, and the clock generation circuit will end up in the middle of the breadboard. With the circuit ready, connect the 9 volt power along with the JTAC connector and USB to the computer for programming. Then open the first project, Lesson 10A, and program it to the CPLD. Here you can see it's counting, just as we would expect a 4 bit binary counter should. So let's go back and change the programming file to lesson10b.pof and program it to the CPLD. Again, we see a 4-bit counter that operates just like Lesson 10A's. So let's also check the third one, Lesson 10C. Open the Lesson 10C.pof and program it to the CPLD. Still, the counter is operating exactly the same. 
So here's proof that it doesn't matter whether you use the schematic method, Verilog HDL, or VHDL. You can get the exact same operation using any of the methods for building a CPLD image, leaving the choice to you for which one you want to use for your designs. In the real world, the schematic block diagram is typically only used for smaller designs. But in addition to the schematic, there are other types of block diagram design methods that use the Simulink flow part of MATLAB to harness the parallel power of FPGA and CPLD. Verilog HDL is a big champion in the private industry world for a variety of reasons, but as examples, Intel and Cisco are big users of Verilog HDL as well as System Verilog. On the flip side, VHDL is commonly used by governments, especially in the United States, because of its development roots in the defense industry. All parts in this online course were provided by the Gadgetory. Visit them at gadgetory.com slash pyroedu. We hope you thoroughly enjoyed this course and learned enough to get you excited to continue further into the world of CPLDs and FPGAs. Thank you for following this course and good luck.